welcome to my breast implant follow-up video. If you hear any noises, it's just this dog who's decided it's time to drink a whole bowl of water right as I press film. It's good. It's good timing, Floss. It's impeccable timing. I am currently in my pyjamas and I thought I would have a cup of tea and finally film this video that I have indeed been meaning to film now for two, three months. It is basically a list of questions that everybody has asked me. So the first question that people commonly ask me is what size were you? So I was a small B cup, 10, small B, wasn't much happening there. I got the ones from Cotton On Body. They had like this much padding in them. You can see it in my first boob video. I think I actually showed you that there was literally this much padding in it just to make it look like I had some sort of boobs going on. Um, the next question is, did it cost you heaps of money? And I basically am wording this like everybody asks it. So in terms of the money, uh, the place I went through, it costs about $6,000, um, but from that you can actually get a $500 sort of guarantee thing that I did get as well. Whereas if anything does go wrong with my body, maybe rejecting them or anything along those lines, they will actually redo the operation and it covers me for five years. So it's $100 a year for the next five years basically. Uh, and it it's like having car insurance for your boobs. So I took that, so it cost me six and a half thousand dollars. And I think that's very cheap. Uh, I did go to, the next question, I did go to the Cosmetic Institute in Bondi. Uh, I was originally supposed to go to the Parramatta branch, but then I went to the Bondi one. They moved me over to that one. But that's totally fine. I had a great time there. I liked the vibe in Bondi, I liked the people, I liked the location. I walked there from where I stayed and it was great. Next question, why did I not do it in Melbourne or overseas? So I am from Melbourne. Um, I opted not to do it in Melbourne because I did get a quote here um, from someone who is well respected, he's been around for a million years, I'm not going to say who it is, but um, he basically basically quoted me $10,000 straight up. Um, I didn't get to decide my size. They basically, once I was knocked out, they would put in um, like a silicon, I don't know what it is, and then they filled that up and then whatever looked good for my body type is the size of the implant that they put in. Uh, I also had to buy the implant separately myself and I had to book my own hospital and I had basically everything like that included at the Cosmetic Institute and I got to pick what size I wanted in relation to my body size. So there was no way I was going to do it in Melbourne when even with um, the cost of accommodation and things I paid a lot less than $10,000. Um, flights I didn't pay for, I had um, a friend's frequent flyer points um, so I didn't pay for flights. Uh, accommodation was very expensive. I stayed at the Meriton Service Departments. Um, it was expensive, but because I didn't pay for flights, I kind of didn't mind, you know, splashing out a bit on the uh, accommodation. When I did get there, I was upgraded for no extra cost to the penthouse suite at the very top. So I can't really fault where I stayed. It was amazing and I had the best view in Bondi. I looked out over the Sydney Harbour Bridge and it was it was freaking awesome. Best place to recover. I can't I can't fault it. The reason I didn't go overseas uh, is because one, I've heard lots of horror stories about going overseas. Two, I feel like it's just all gonna be so expensive, like flights, going there. Three, I wanted in the nicest way possible, I wanted to make sure that I could understand the people who were operating on me and that they could understand what I wanted. Um, not saying anything bad against them, but that's as simple as it is. Um, and the last reason is basically because if something goes wrong, 
what am I going to do, like fly back overseas to get it fixed? Like that just doesn't work. That doesn't work for me. Next question is, did it hurt? Okay, so it's an operation. Basically, they cut the underneath of your boob like a cut. Yay big. They like have to prise that thing, the muscles off your ribs and they have to shove stuff in there. And Yes, it actually hurts. Uh, it hurt a lot less than I thought it would. Um, the first day, I, I was just... I didn't feel a weight on my chest, but I just felt tight. Like, not that I've ever been to the gym and done like arms day, but I imagine that it's like that. Those muscles, just every time you try to exert yourself, you just can't. Um, I couldn't push myself out of bed. I had to like somehow like roll and then like hook my arms and like rock myself out of bed. And um, I would reach out to get a coffee. <laughs> I couldn't. I literally couldn't reach out like this and grab the coffee. I had to get them to like pass it to me. I couldn't just do simple things basically. Um, but I, I mean, look, I was prescribed Endone. I was prescribed Panadine Fort and then just Panadol. I never actually filled the script for Endone because I don't like it can make some people really nauseous and I hate being sick. So I basically had Panadine Fort for the first couple days. Then I just had Panadol. And as I was advised, advised by a friend, I just kept the Panadol up every five hours with my antibiotics every three or something like that. I don't know the numbers anymore, but I just basically kept it in my system and then I didn't ever get too sore, basically. I stopped having Panadine Fort on like the third day. I just had it to sleep. I didn't like how loopy it made me feel. I Somehow those things make me feel really drunk. That's not a good thing. Not, mm, mm, mm. Mm. That's good tea. Um, I'm doing a tea detox, this like skinny mint tea. This is the cleanse, night cleanse tea. It's very nice. It's very lemon lemongrass and gingery. It kind of just makes me poo a lot. But, you know, that's cool. That's cool. Okay. Um, on the did it hurt note, I actually went shopping at the big shopping centre in Bondi. I was like where I stayed was basically just a block from there. Um, so on the day after my operation, I went and got my nails done, went shopping. The next day I had friends come and visit, I went shopping more, I bought some shoes, I actually tried on a dress, like, it was fine, to be honest, it was, I was, I was fine, it was so easy, I didn't get sick, it was, I didn't even get constipated, it was glorious, I had a great time, it was a good holiday. <laughs> How did it all work? Me being like flying up from Melbourne and all that sort of thing. So what happened was I flew up on the 30th the 30th of January and I had my consultation that day um, I can't remember what time it was it was something like four o'clock so they actually left me plenty of time to get there to you know to check in have lunch do all that sort of stuff and they were they were really nice about all of that they made sure that I did have time to do all of those things before my before my operation went ahead. So I had my consult with Daniel Kwok, Dr. Kwok. Uh, he, look, honestly, he felt a bit rushed and that didn't bother me, but I went in on my own, obviously. I went into my consultation on my own and the whole, okay, what size do you want? That is a really scary question because you're there in the mirror trying on this bra, like stuffing things in and you're just like, how is this real? No way will I ever have this on my, on my, in my tits. Like that's what? And they're going, well, what size do you want? And you're like, I don't know. And I was, I thought I took ages and I was like, look, what size do you think? Do you like this? Do you like that? Didn't want to go too small. Didn't want to go too big and regret it. So. I played around, I made a decision, um, I think we decided on 485 in both of my breasts which would 
which was, I, you know, I was kind of worried that that might be too big anyway. Uh, I went through the whole care package with another one of the girls who works there. She told me about the guarantee that I said earlier. Gave me the night to comp contemplate it. Um, so then I went home and then the next morning. Okay, so I look hideous and I'm about to go and check myself in for my operation. Farewell, small ones. I had to fast from midnight the next morning I was admitted at about 9 and then pretty much they just took me through I popped on my super sexy gown like I don't think I've ever looked better my um, little sock things and all that sort of jazz uh, then the anesthetist anesthetist I think I said that right I can't say that word but I think I just nailed it um, he came in, I got to meet him, he was really nice, really funny. Uh, a girl came in and took pictures of my boobs with some like number, it actually felt like, you're standing there with this thing, it felt like my first mugshot and I was really nervous and I think I might have even said that to her, that that was my first mugshot. Uh, I don't know if that's a funny joke or not, whatever. Uh, then my doctor came in, he drew the lines like down here, blah blah blah, uh, and he actually decided last minute that we were changing the sizes uh, so that freaked me out so we went in back into the other room he said look we're gonna do a bigger one in this one a smaller one and we're gonna do a smaller one in the big one so even them up a bit because I was thinking you know they're not the same size all night I was thinking why would I have the same they're gonna be uneven still which I know boobs are meant to be sisters not twins but you know I was all night, it was going through my head. So when he said that, I was terrified but relieved. So I ended up going with a 485 in my smaller boob and a four, four, 485 in my smaller boob and a 450cc in my bigger boob. To be honest, these days, I don't even remember which one was the small one and which one was the big one. So that's positive, isn't it? Anyway, so by about 9.30, I walked myself into the surgery. It was freezing in there. They gave me one of those blankets where you like crack the things and they go hot. So I had this nice warm blanket in this freezing cold room, obviously, to make you bleed less and all that sort of stuff. Um, and I lay down and I hate needles and they, they strapped me like a starfish strapped my legs down, strapped my arms down and then they gave me all my needles that made me go real loopy and I remember asking if I was drunk now um, and then I didn't even have to count down I was I was a goner um, as I fell asleep they did have Lord playing and they, one of the nurses was singing along to Lord so that made me, that was cool I fell asleep thinking yeah it's a party up in here it's a party. Anyway, so woke up. Uh, I think I was in recovery at about 10.30. It's maybe like an hour. Yeah, something like that. I was in recovery. I was awake. Um, and I was just kind of chilling in there at about 11.15 or so. They called me an Uber or a taxi. I, don't, I think it was an Uber that took me back to the apartments. And I was in bed by 12. Done and dusted. Chilling out, had some food. It was good. It was fun. Um, so I had a nurse look after me while I was up there. Her name was Lisa and she was beautiful. Um, they basically organised her through a hospital nearby and she pretty much just stayed with me because I got a, an apartment initially with two bedrooms. I ended up with three when I got upgraded, which I didn't need, but um, yeah, so she pretty much packed all her stuff into one of the rooms and then she was just in and out, sort of meal times at the start and then she stayed the first night with me. Um, I didn't get any pictures with her because she was really, really shy and she wouldn't let me basically, but yeah, she was really cool and I recommend doing that if you're that way inclined and you don't have anyone to go with you. Um, oh yeah, she also washed my hair for me. 
because you can't wash your hair for like three weeks so you can't lift your arms up like that high they have to stay about here like no higher so initially I found it really difficult I couldn't I, it just hurt just to do that so by like week two I found that I could just turn my head figure it out myself but that was a unique experience even though I'm a hairdresser having someone in the shower with me washing my hair it was weird it was real weird uh, so the first day I slept a lot second day you're allowed to have a shower I took my compression bra which is so pretty so pretty I actually took that off for the first time on that second day and um, had Lisa basically on standby outside the toilet and I had a shower jumped out hopped into bed as I thought I was gonna faint they say that a lot of girls do actually kind of faint the first time they take it off will get very faint and I definitely was one of those people I just felt awful like when you're gonna faint I've never fainted but that sensation where your whole body gets hot and sticky and you're like oh I'm gonna be sick I'm gonna get something I'm gonna something but no um had a lemonade icy pole which I lived off for the next three days they were great they were great highly advise lemonade icy poles to anybody out there who has an operation because they are like eating without actually eating but you get sugar so you don't faint okay so what size are you now I am now I was a small B, I am now a larger E, a 10 E. I could probably be like a 12 double D, but uh, I would say I'm a 10 E. The 10 just fits me a bit better, but uh, yeah, the larger side of 10 E. So I don't need padding and stuff, which is fabulous. I love it. Um, it has changed my life not having to wear a bra all the time. <laughs> Okay, uh, the next thing on the list was painkillers. I said already I had Panadine for and Panadol. That's it. Uh, and my antibiotics, but that's it. Uh, with the checkups, I don't have to fly up to Sydney at one week, one week, six weeks, six months, and then I think it's something silly like six years or something. Uh, I actually have a Skype call uh, to someone from the Cosmetic Institute, like a nurse. And they call the day before and just make sure that it'll be okay to do it then. Um, we pick a time that works best for me. And even if I'm on my phone, they just kind of video and just go the boobs a little bit, send them a picture. Um, yeah, no, it's great. It's really good. And if I had any problems, I'm sure um, I could go to a doctor down here. I did go to a doctor to have my steri strips changed. Um, at the end of the first week you have the strips that they put over your stitches changed um, by a professional to make sure there's no infection that I found quite seamless they actually gave me a pack to take to the doctors with everything in it steri strips anti antibiotic antibacterial wipes um, everything everything you would ever need to change them so the doctors didn't have to do anything but like open the pack and slip slop slap um, that was just look the whole experience was so well put together it was really organized the cosmetic Institute staff were smiling they were excited to see me even if they weren't um, and for the price like you couldn't fault it you know in Melbourne I went and it was like this dingy office in this dingy building and I just felt so uncomfortable but there it was light it was bright it was it was beautiful it was really nice experience and even all the consultation rooms were nice it all smelled nice and new and clean and fresh um, the doctor may have seemed rushed but he knew exactly what he was doing which is why he was rushed he told me straight away that I was gonna have a great result um, I couldn't have asked for a better experience. Uh, I had two weeks off work. I was back at work at the third week. Being a hairdresser, there were a couple of things like rubbing towels from up high that I couldn't do. Um, I did a bit of hair drying, but I didn't do a lot until the end of the third week, which is when you can, you know, lift your arms up again. And I have yet to have any problems. Touch wood. So, am I happy? Yes. Am I glad that I got fake boobs? Yes. 
do I hate that all of a sudden most of the guys on my Facebook are like, hey, we should hang out. Yes, I hate that. I didn't do this to get guys to like me. I did this because I wanted boobs. Because since puberty, I wanted tits and it never happened for me. It wasn't going to happen for me, genetically, so I bloody made it happen. And I don't care what anybody thinks about that. I don't care if you think that I'm being selfish about having boobs. Maybe I am. I don't care. I mean, now I feel in proportion, I feel complete, I feel happy. And that's all that really matters. Um, I am wearing the same top that I was wearing in my last video. It was a singlet top pajamas and I am wearing it again now just to show you the difference so um, feel free to flick back to the old videos and have a look at the nothing that I had there compared to what I got happening now I would just like to say a huge thank you to the Cosmetic Institute for basically changing my life um, for giving me confidence that I never had and for making me just feel like the person I was always trying to be but not really once I took my bra off <laughs> so thank you very much and I hope that I have answered pretty much all your questions if there's anything I didn't answer just write it underneath and I'll address it or I'll comment back or something but hopefully I've addressed everything um, yeah Alrighty, I will see you in another video. See you later.